Okay, so before we get started prepping the bumper out for the final time, let's take a little time to talk about painting in uncontrolled environments. What I mean by that is painting outside of a paint booth. We want to watch out for any sort of product with silicone in it. You'll find silicone in stuff like uh, WD-40, uh, auto detailing supplies, tire shine. If you've sprayed any sort of a silicone-based product in your shop for six months prior to uh, doing any paint work, you run the risk of silicone contamination. And what that is, is let's just say we were to get just a tiny little speck, just a itty bitty little microscopic speck of silicone on this bumper cover right here. When that paint hits that silicone, it's gonna run away from it and it's gonna leave a little crater in the paint. And then when you look at it, it looks similar to a fish's eye. So just remember, any silicone products in the shop, around the shop, any oils, greases, anything like that, that's a less than ideal environment. The second thing is, we can kick up dust off the floor. I always like to take and wet the floor down in all of the areas that I'm gonna be walking. Before we do the final prep on the bumper cover, this way, if a little water happens to splash up onto it, the final prep will take care of it. Okay, so now with the floor wetted down, I'm just gonna use glass cleaner. I like to spray some directly on one side. All the areas that are going to be receiving paint, just start spraying it down. Don't have to use a lot of it. I'm holding it in an area back here where there's going to be no paint products applied. We always want to wipe it down until we know it's clean. And then once you've got it prepped out, you don't want to touch it with your hands. Now I'm going to use the dry side and just go over it again. Try to pick up any residue that might be left on here. Let's see what we remove from that. Look at that. And that's why we prep it out. We want to get stuff like that off so we make sure the paint bonds well to the substrate. We'll flip this over, just get to a cleaner area. Let's go again. That looks good. When you're starting to fold your towel out again, don't shake it a lot around the bumper cover. That can put stuff on the uh, surface that can get into your paint. So let's uh, finish up this side here. And there's what we got off of that uh, other side. Okay, so I'm going to go grab another blue shop towel here and we're going to give it one more wipe down. I'm no longer going to be applying glass cleaner to the bumper cover. Rather, I'm going to just put a little bit on this towel here and just wipe it one more time. I'm going to flip it over and use the dry side, wipe off any residue. Definitely much better. This uh, area around this masking here, it looks like I forgot to wipe it out the first time. See, check that out right there. The more things like that that we can catch before we go spraying the paint on the vehicle, the less chance we're going to have of a, of a problem developing either during or after the actual painting process. Okay, I'm switching to the dry side now. All the areas I was holding, I'm going to wipe all of those down too. Now these flanges and stuff, they can get pretty rough. Always take a look. You start seeing things like this happening. Make sure we get rid of that nasty area on the towel. And this spot here has still just has a, just enough glass cleaner on it to get it done. Let's do a quick inspection here. All right, so this thing's ready to go. Looks like it's uh, time to mix up some color. Okay, so let's talk about the paint that I'm using here. This is PPG's Deltron, code K12. This has the lighter flip-flop variance. A variance is just a very small difference in the color from vehicle to vehicle. You wanna make sure that the cover is all the way on. Metallic is heavier than what it's suspended in. The metallic will tend to settle down into the bottom of the can. Before I even open up the lid, turn it upside down and let that metallic settle into the base. Uh, so now I'm just gonna take it, turn it around and shake it. The idea is to get that metallic working through the base. 
at this point in time, we want to make sure that we are remaining super clean. So the last thing I did before I came out here to mix this was wash my hands again. I wiped this down with uh, wax and grease remover and then wiped it down with a dry cloth before I uh, put it anywhere near this paint. I'm running the flat part of the paint paddle over the bottom of the can and lifting. Run it over the bottom and lift. You know, the one thing with high metallics, mix them thoroughly before you reduce them. Watch how the paint flows off the mixing paddle there. You notice it's taken a while. They're intended to be reduced with urethane grade reducer. This is a pea sheet, and this tells me everything I need to know about how to prep the surface, mix the paint, how to reduce it, all of the procedures for shooting, the proper temperatures, air pressure, things like that. Here's your reduction, paint and reducer, one to one. So that means equal parts of both. I'm always gonna try to pour over the area I don't need to read, and it's always a good idea not to pour over the label. Take a look right here and you see it says one to one. That's the reduction rate that we're using. It's all based on quantity. I'm gonna pour this to the six. Grab your lid and cover it up. Even lightly like that to help keep contaminants out. We're gonna grab our medium reducer. This is based on temperature. On a cold day, we're using fast. On a warm day, we're using slow. I want to make sure that there wouldn't be anything in here that might contaminate the paint when I pour it in. I've got a quantity of six right here. That means by the time I'm done adding the reducer, I'm going to bring it also to level six. And if we do it this way, then we will have the one-to-one -one mixture. We're going to add just a little more. Just want to grab our paint paddle, mix it up. Okay, so the whole idea of reducing paint is to make it more sprayable, to help it flow a little bit better. We want to make sure we're using the right temperature of reducer. Medium is perfect. I did this before when it was unreduced, so now let's see how it flows. See that nice smooth stream like that? That's pretty much what we're looking for. That's going to be all mixed up. I'm going to add some reducer. I'm going to take it over here to the air hose. I'm going to blow some more reducer through it just to see what kind of pattern I get. Looks like I must not have tightened that packing nut. It's another reason to throw a little reducer in your gun. Make sure you don't have any leaks. If you over tighten this, the needle will hang up. It'll actually stay in the open position and then you're continuing to blow paint. And let's try this again. I do not see any leaks. I like to always check the tip and make sure it doesn't leak off. We definitely want to make sure that we eliminate as much water as we can here from the source. The compressed air going into the top is hot. When it goes through the top of the tank, it goes into that great big giant open space. And it's kind of like an expansion valve on an air conditioning system in a car that when the compressed air expands, it cools, it condenses, and it causes moisture in your tank before you start the job. Make sure that you drain your compressor tank. Get as much water out of it as you can. Okay, so this is an air pressure regulator. Push it down to lock it in position. Lift it up to make adjustments. What we're looking for was 35 to 45 PSI at the gun. So how do you know for sure that you're getting that at the gun itself? When we're using a regulator that's set back like this, there's a margin of error. I've always used this method here and it's been just fine. Now there's two positions on this gun for spray. You have an and you have a product spray. You have a product spray. You see right now, we're somewhere at around 69 PSI. Now watch what happens when I trigger this. See how it drops? That right there is our gross air pressure. That right there is our net air pressure. So in other words, when I pull this trigger, I know that I have a sustained 64 pounds per square inch at this point. 
air pressure and air volume are two very important things when we're painting. There is a little loss between the regulator and the paint gun uh, through the hose. For my setup, it's somewhere around 18%. So we'll lift up the adjustment knob so we can make the adjustment. Now, as we spin it backwards, you watch the air pressure drop. Now, remember, it's the same principle. The air pressure is going to drop when you bust your gun open. So now, we're going to add 40 plus 7, so we're looking for 47 PSI. That's about where I'm going to try it. Now, I may make some adjustments from that, but uh, I'm going to start right here and uh, we'll see what happens. You can't use reducer to set up your spray pattern. It flows more than the paint that's over there. All I want to do is just do a basic check just to see how everything distributes out. And it really looks fine. I don't see any problem with that. Okay.